Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Think Business Live. I'm looking forward to talking with Eric Simonson. Eric, it's great to connect with you, and I'm looking forward to talking to you. You are the CEO of Abundo Wealth Certified uh, Financial Planner, um, AbundoWealth.com. Uh, looking forward to you. You're looking to change, or you are changing the model of, um, of your industry. And so I want to dive into that. So um, let's kind of start with where you are, and then I want to kind of work backwards from there. So talk about how you're changing the industry to kind of have this flat fee financial planning for everyone. You only pay for advice, you know, keep more of your money, no sales pitches, no hidden fees, as it says on your website. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, John. Uh, yeah, it's all those things, right? I think when people think of a financial advisor, they immediately get like a shiver down their spine because they think it's a salesperson. They're worried they're going to get, you know, taken advantage of somehow. And so our industry kind of has a bad reputation and we're trying to change that. We're trying to, you know, create a really honest, transparent business that, uh, you know, is for the people, right? Like, uh, if somebody works with us, they're think of it as like a gym membership, right? They're paying a transparent cost and they utilize the service as much as they want. There's never going to be any, any additional upselling, any products to sell, nothing like that. It's just simply advice that they get. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, the, the alternative, right, is most financial advisors out there, you know, probably 98, 99% of them are going to try to manage your investments for you. So they're going to say, hey, let's take these over and they're going to charge you a percentage of your wealth. And the issue we've seen is, number one, that percentage ends up being a lot over your lifetime, you know, because it's just every year it, it continues to, to eat away at your potential returns. Yeah. Um, and that compounding effect is huge. And then number two, you know, that advisor then is going to be incentivized um, because of the way they're paid, right? Not because they're a bad person, but just because of the way they're paid, they're going to be incentivized to try to uh, talk you out of potentially doing some things like paying down debt because they don't want to lose those assets or um, maybe advising you against buying a rental property because again, they want to, they want to manage that money for you rather than you use it for an investment property. And so there's these inherent issues that we saw, um, with that model. And so that's a, another big reason why we wanted to do this kind of low cost flat fee for advice model. So are you also managing people's money or you're just giving them advice? We just give them advice. Um, we like to say that we, we uh, teach and empower people to understand how to manage investments on their own because own. it is so much easier to do, especially, you know, in 2023 than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Now it's, you know, just a couple clicks of a button and you're placing trades. So um, we found that that was of course something we were worried about. Like, are people going to be able to do this? And we found that universally um, people are able to, yes, set up, accounts correctly, move money around and trade, and we support them through every step of that process. So let me ask you a question. So when you are, um, how real time are you? Like if somebody has a question, do they need to set up a time? Are there people that are always um, accessible when you, you know, when they, when, when they're needed, how does that work? Yeah, I would say, uh, a little of both, you know, advisors try to be very responsive. Um, that's a big thing we pride ourselves on is, is cause financial questions, typically people, especially, you know, nowadays they want an answer, um, because yeah. information is at your fingertips. So we make sure we get back to clients very, very quickly. Um, but then separate from that, we do have five advisors, we are growing. And so if, if your specific person is not around, there's always somebody that, that can quickly answer your question. Um, yeah. yeah. And we've also built out some tools and technology that clients have access to 24 seven that can support them with, with, uh, what they need. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And so this is for the do it yourselfers. And so let's, let's, let's talk about, you know, the do it yourselfers, what's the, the do it yourselfers, what platforms are they using? You know, I mean, today there's, there's so many different platforms. If someone, if someone were to call you and say, Hey, what platform should I use? Should I use Robinhood? Should I use, you know, Fidelity? Should I use this? You know, 
How yeah. are you guiding people to the right platform to use? Yeah. Well, I, I've never been asked before. So, um, yeah, we, we see a lot of different platforms. Um, we'll see, yeah, Acorns, we'll see Fidelity, we'll see Schwab, we'll see TD. We'll go down the list. Um, we typically tell people who either are setting up an account for the first time or who where should they move their money to, we'll tell them either um, Fidelity because it has great interface. You've got access to, you know, every really every low cost investment option out there. Um, Vanguard equally great, although the the kind of the user interface is a is a bit dated. I know they're working on it. Um, third thing would be Schwab. Um, Schwab is great, and then TD Ameritrade kind of being the fourth one. And we like to tell our our clients that we support those four, meaning we have educational videos, we've got how to's, we've got tutorials, walking them through what to do um, for each of those four. And if they go outside of that, then we're not going to be able to, you know, through our tutorials, be able to, to help them as much, but we'll still <laughs> gladly support them if that's where they want to stay. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I love that. And so now let's talk about rewind as far as zooming out and looking at the industry and seeing what was and seeing where you could, you know, make a change. And how did you determine once you had this idea that people would actually pay for it? How did you, because I think that's a big thing right now, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of yous in the world looking at all the models of all these different industries and, and they're finding the gaps, but then we still got to find out, will people pay for this new filler that we're putting into this gap? And so how did you, how did you kind of take the idea and realize, Hey, this is something that, that people will pay for, and we can really scale and monetize it. I think the first thing was when I, when I first had the idea and I, I told it to a handful of friends, uh, people in my network, I think of the first 10 people I, I suggested it to eight of them said, I want to be an investor. Like I want to give you money to actually buy into this business to have equity. And I, I said, thank you, but you know, no. Um, and so, but given that there was that sort of fever around it, um, I thought, wow, this, this must be a good idea then. And so I had a lot of energy from the start to kind of follow through on it. And once we, you know, we hung our shingle, as they say, um, the calendar filled up, we had, 30 or so clients in our first um, two, three months. And all of them, you know, had great words to say about the model. None of them um, had any issues with paying it out of, out of pocket versus again, you know, the traditional model is it, the fee gets taken out of your investments. Right. This, uh, you, you know, you see, right. And we want that. It's very transparent. Um, and we actually, you know, one of the things I was concerned about was client retention and that being a big part of too, of verifying if it's going to work or not. Yeah. And, um, we didn't have a single client stop working with us, um, for two years, for the first two years of the yeah. business being open. Um, and that particular instance was, uh, they came into a ton of money through a business buyout and just wanted, wanted a little bit more support, um, in, you know, and not feeling comfortable with pushing the buns on their own uh, as far as the investments go. So we were totally fine with that. But those were probably the big things that for me um, validated it. Yeah. And how did you come up with, uh, can we talk pricing? I'm always yeah. curious about pricing. So as, we, as we're as we recording this live on April 3rd, 2023, the prices are the following. But by the time you listen to this, which could be now, next week, next month, or three years from now, prices may change. I'm just giving you your, <laughs> I'm giving you a footnote. So, so right now it's $89 a month for a solo uh, person and 139 for a couple. And yeah. so how did you come up with that price? Everybody's always wanting to think, figure out how do you come up with the pricing? Is it the 89? Is it the 87? Is it the 139? Is it the 137? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. what's too little, what's too much? You know, how did you kind of come up with that? Yeah. And John, as a business coach, I think you're going to hate all my answers here. Um, but the first, the first thing is, um, we started out for the first four or five months of the business. Um, it was variable pricing where we were trying to tie it a little bit to income. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't like that. I didn't feel like it was necessarily fair. I didn't feel like right. it was very communicable. It's hard for, to track. For, it's hard yeah, to track. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, in kind of spring, summer of 2020, we, uh, 
fixed our fees to what they are now. Um, and that, that resulted in about 15% lower subscriptions at the time to us. So we took a haircut by doing that. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we gave back to our clients and, um, we chose the 139.89. um, really it, it wasn't sexy. It was, you know, paper, you know, back of the napkin math, if you will, yeah. and kind of what, what do we need to have still decent margins, but still keeping them as low as possible yeah. um, to support the greatest number of people as possible. And, um, that was, you know, coming up on three years ago and we've never raised them and we don't have any immediate plans to raise them. Um, and our goal is just figuring out how do we get behind the scenes, right? How do we figure out efficiencies and capacity to be able to, yeah. to scale at that price and serve as many people as possible? Yeah, I love it. Well, it's, um, you know, it's interesting because I think I have, I have, I'm not saying this to impress, but to impress upon, I have, I have hundreds of clients all over the globe. And my part of my thing is I'm accessible. I return every call, text, email, same day, unless I'm in a meeting or I'm sleeping, right? That's yep. part of working with me uh, when, when I'm coaching you. And so, um, but, but people typically only reach out when they really need something, right? I encourage people always, I don't want you ever, but, but typically only a small percentage reach, reach out. And then there's a very, very small percentage that on a, you know, basis really are like extra needy and that's okay. That's what, that's what I'm here for. That's what you're there for. But then you kind of get them on a path. So, it really is easy to manage up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of clients, knowing just the numbers of how people will actually kind of dive in. Right. Yeah. I think that there's a, a ton of truth to that. Yeah. Um, I will say that we're also trying to still be proactive um, mm -hmm. in the sense that um, if we haven't heard from a client, in 60 days, the advisor actually gets a, gets an alert saying, Hey, you should reach out to so-and-so client. Um, and we follow up, we make sure we're continuing yeah. to move the ball forward because I think the, you know, the, the thing that we really take a lot of pride in is, is helping our clients move forward on their goals. Yeah. And we don't want them to just pay us and, um, and not, uh, you know, not necessarily use us because then I, I feel like we're not, we're not doing yeah. our job. No, I agree. I agree. I, I love, I love your whole model. And, and, and that my, actually my next question was going to be, what do you do to the people who are kind of sitting out there? Because I would think, you know, do you offer kind of monthly or quarterly webinars that they can join or, um, but I love the proactive. Do you do anything else to kind of keep them engaged? Yeah. So we do, um, a monthly newsletter where we're summarizing here's, you know, here's our biggest kind of financial immediate financial recommendations for people. So if it's, if it's around tax time, which we are in, right. Our last newsletter yeah. was highlighting, Hey, make sure you're funding your IRA, Roth IRA, SEP IRA prior to the tax deadline. Um, we're highlighting different travel. Um, cause that is another kind of piece of what we do, which is unique as we provide travel tips. Um, and so we, we highlight, you know, here's a great travel idea we saw recently. So we do send out a monthly, um, kind of newsletter engagement to all of our clients. And then, like I said, we've got um, different tools and support available uh, for our clients, either if, either through the, we call it the learning lab, there's a bunch of content we've built out on different financial topics, um, or we have the actual financial planning software that they can yeah. use and they can play with throughout, um, you know, in between meetings. I love it. Let's talk about real quickly your startup. Because you offer you in, in your pricing, there's a startup fee. What do you do to connect with the client during that startup phase? Yeah. So uh, initially, we'll do a, a perspective meeting where it's say, hey, let's learn more about you. Let's share how a bundle works. See if it's a good fit. There's no pressure in that meeting, no obligation. If they say, yep, we would love to work with you, then we schedule a follow up meeting to basically get them connected to us and our tools and our software. Um, that's usually a 30 minute meeting. And then we do our big recommendations meeting, which is around 90 minutes going through everything in their financial life. So not just investments, yeah. but really looking at like budgeting, cash reserves, uh, benefits through work, credit card strategies, insurance, every, everything we can possibly think of we'll cover in that meeting. Um, and then we'll check in a month after that to say, Hey, what questions have come up? How are you doing on your to-dos? And then we'll usually meet again 
two to three months after that. So it's, it's kind of four or five meetings in the first six months to really, um, get them on the path that, that they want to be on. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think the model is great. I, 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 I can see this happening in a lot of different industries in a lot of different ways, especially ones where people, um, you know, become very predictable and, and are there to follow up with people and things in, in like the financial industry where they need to know, like, what do I press? What do I do? I mean, very real time kind of transactional type of things uh, where they need the strategy and even know kind of even how to input something or understand what something means uh, that when it comes to their wealth. Um, kudos to you for, you know, coming up with the idea and diving in. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the courage of kind of jumping in and starting your own business. You know, tell tell me about that. Did you break out? Sorry, John. I think I did. I'm back. Yeah. Um, I was saying, I, I won't repeat everything I just said, but I was giving you some kudos on your business. Talk a little bit about the courage of what it took to kind of jump and start your own business. Yeah, I will. Um, I will say that um, I had a wonderful job, wonderful career at a broker dealer, um, you know, large firm, and we were doing great work there. Um, and I, I, frankly, I could have been set, right. I, I definitely could have just coasted. Um, but I, I was really motivated. I think by this idea that there's so many people out there that are not being served, um, that either don't have access to a traditional financial advisor or the advisor doesn't want to work with them because they don't have enough wealth. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I definitely took, uh, took a bit of a leap to do that. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't know if I would use the word courage. I would say I was, I was pretty immediately valid in that, um, jump in the sense that clients were knocking on the door. I had great people who wanted to come work with me. Um, and so, you know, to anybody out there that's, I think, thinking about making a change and it's led by their beliefs, led by their ethics, um, you know, typically things will work out if, if you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Good for you. I think it's great. All right. Let's do a quick speed round. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, a book that's had the biggest impact on you. Uh, looking at my bookshelf, good to great. Good to great. It's a great one. I love that one. Best piece of wisdom you've ever received. Um, honesty is not only morally right, it's also highly efficient. Yeah, that's a good one. Finish this sentence. One thing that every do it yourselfer um, needs to ask for help, help on more often is assessing their true level of risk tolerance. And your company is an investment, not an expense because we help people. Gosh, like a million things flood in my, my mind. Um, investment on expense because we help people actually move the needle on their financial goals and provide clarity on everything, everything going on in their financial life. It's great. Uh, Eric, this was great. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Think community. You know, I'm a business coach. I work with successful people who are stuck and get them unstuck and coming up with ideas. Um, and one of the things I love about this podcast is talking to people who also can get you unstuck. And Eric is um, showcasing how you can look at an industry, see what's missing, and then build something, uh, a very, very um, successful, lucrative, scalable business. So Eric, thanks so much for being on. Tell people how they can connect with you and again, who your ideal clients are. Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate that. Uh, we are www.abundowealth.com, A-B-U-N-D-O wealth.com. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, all the social medias. And then I would say, you know, John, we're really trying to serve everybody. I think DIY investors is the normal people that gravitate towards working, us, work, working with us, but we've got, you know, we've got um, younger, you know, younger folks just graduating college who need help. We've got retirees who need help. Really, if, if, if you are looking for a low cost, you know, transparent advisor relationship, um, we'd like to support you. It's great. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. It's great to connect with you. Stay on for just a minute. Think community. Um, if Eric can help you, um, check it out, abundowealth.com. If I can help you, johndwaskin.com. Uh, Eric, this was great. Thanks so much. Thank you, John.